Hi, everybody. I'm Jim Rohn. I was just going over our latest issue of our new magazine called The Achiever. I want to thank you for taking the time to spend just a few minutes with me today. I have a very interesting subject. I call it Five Simple Steps to Go from Average to Fortune. I've been asked to give it in many places for corporations and companies, and uh, now I have the opportunity to share it with you. It's a pretty big subject for someone like me. For my life started out rather modestly, uh, up in farm country in Idaho where I was raised. Uh, I grew up in this little community of some four or five thousand people and uh, went to high school, graduated, went to college for a year and a half. And uh, then I quit, decided I was smart enough and uh, got me a job to see if I couldn't make all of my ambitions come true. My parents, I think, gave me a very good foundation, a very good start. I was an only child, so I think they took some extra time with me and uh, got off to a pretty good start. A couple of years after I left school, I found a very beautiful young lady and persuaded her to marry me and uh, kept making all of those grand promises, as we're inclined to do, that everything was going to work well and that she had made a wise decision. Well, two or three years after I'd gotten married, it didn't look like my new bride had made such a wise decision because I'm now starting to struggle. I've got far too much month at the end of the money, if you've ever known what that's like. And I'm wondering what to do. I'm behind on my bills. I'm willing to work hard. That's not my problem. But it isn't as going as well as I had thought it would up until that point. I'm struggling. And I'm wondering what to do. Should I go back to school and get some more education? Uh, I didn't have any capital to start a business. So all these questions were going through my mind at a time when I needed some answers. How to really become successful and how to turn my life around. Well, at age 25, good fortune came my way. And sometimes it's a little difficult to describe good fortune. Why do unique things happen to you when they do? Part of that's a mystery to me. I really don't know. One of my friends says, well, things don't just happen. They happen just. And maybe that's it. I really don't know. But my good fortune was at age 25, I met a very remarkable man. His name was Mr. Schof, Mr. Earl Schof. And he's the gentleman who gave me those last final answers that I had been looking for up until that time. Mr. Schof was a very unique gentleman. He was a businessman, an entrepreneur. He had several businesses. And he took a liking to me and he hired me and I went to work for him. I spent the next five years working for him. And then unfortunately at the end of that five years he died. But I did get to spend five years with this remarkable man and he's the gentleman who gave me the answers. He gave me the points and the ideas that helped to really turn my life around. And I will always be grateful for finding someone who took the time to share their information with me. Uh, the best thing Mr. Schof gave me was not a job. The best thing he gave me was the benefit of his philosophy. And fortunately for me, his philosophy worked for me. I practiced it. I utilized it. And I put it to work. And about 17 years ago, I was living in Beverly Hills. And I was going through all the notes that I'd gathered up during that five-year period. And uh, the idea came to me, why not share these, uh, these ideas with other people? I've used them to change my life. Things have worked out well for me. I wonder if others might find them interesting. So I put all of the material together and five years ago gave my first lecture, my first seminar. And ever since then, I've spent more and more of my time lecturing and sharing ideas on how to do better, how to make your life personally, socially, and economically work out better. And especially for the last six or seven years, I've had the opportunity to travel around the world. The seminar has been translated in many languages. And I find myself now spending the biggest share of my time lecturing, sharing ideas, and trying to come up with answers that can make a difference in your life. Let me give you this simple little talk. How to go from average to fortune. There's five simple steps. You might like to make a note of them. Here's the first one. Get serious. That's number one. I don't know any substitute for that. You've really got to get serious. You don't have to be grim, but you must be serious. I know a guy that's got a half a dozen jokes keeping him from becoming wealthy. He's not known as rich. He's known as a joker, which I guess is okay if that's the kind of life you want to live. But it really isn't the best way to live. To go from average to fortune, you must get serious. 
And you must get serious about two very important things. Number one is setting your goals and where you want to go. Designing the next five, the next ten years is so vitally important. What do you want to do economically? Where do you want to go? What do you want to be? What would you like to have? What would you like to share? How much would you like to earn? How far would you like to go? Those are some major questions to ask. And for that all to work out like you want it to for the next five or ten years, in my personal opinion, you've got to get serious. Then you have to get serious about another important subject. And that important subject is called personal development. Personal development is striving hard to become the kind of person that you want to be. And to become the kind of person you want to be, you've got to work at it. Ten years from now, you will surely become someone. The big question is, who? What are you becoming? And if you go to work on it now, sure enough, in a very short period of time, you can take on a new direction to become the kind of person you want to be. There's a very important question to ask, and the question is, ten years from now, you will surely arrive. And the question is, where? So to answer the question of where you want to arrive and the kind of person you want to be, you've got to get serious. So that's point number one. To make your life worthwhile and unique, to go from average to fortune, you've got to get serious. Now, the second point is get smart. To make your life work out worthwhile, you've got to have some ideas. You've got to have the information. So you've got to be smart. In fact, in this decade, you must be much smarter than you were in the last decade. You've got to read the books. You've got to come up with the information. When I have a chance to talk to the high school kids, that's the theme of my talk. Get smart. There's nothing worse than being stupid. And if you will read the books, learn from your experiences, do all the things that you possibly can to get the information, sure enough, you'll be wiser this year than you were last year. And I've got a few techniques that I teach in my seminar on how to get smarter, keeping a journal, going to the lectures, going to the seminars, listening to the sermons, picking up ideas from other people. You just must keep up this steady process of learning. Never cease your quest for knowledge. And that's one of the key points to go from average to fortune. Get smart. Now, here's number three. You've got to get going. All of the things that you've learned will not do you that much good if you don't put it into an action plan. You've got to get going. In my management and leadership seminar, we teach game plans, how to put all the good things that you've learned into action, economic action, social action, personal action, how to make the changes and how to actually do the work, how to actually function. Get going, that's the key. Some people are ever learning, but they don't put it into action. They don't really take the action. It's like the man who keeps bringing materials to the building site and never builds anything. He keeps bringing in the sand and the gravel and the windows and the doors and the roofing material, and he just stacks up all these supplies, but he never builds anything. See, if you do that long enough, fairly soon they'll come and take you away. You've got to do something with what you've learned. You've got to take action. You've got to get going. So that's one of the most important things to learn, how to design your days, how to design your weeks, how to design the months so that you take the proper action to get the proper return that you're looking for, whether it's economic or personal. Get going. It's a major key. Now here's number four. You must get excited. And not just the false enthusiasm of just pure positive thinking. You've got to get excited over some very basic things. One is get excited over your ability to make yourself do the necessary things because discipline is major step one toward personal progress. And any time a person wishes to, they can make major changes in their life, personally and socially and financially. It doesn't ever have to be the same after today. No telling what you could do today if you really wish to. The act of murder is a clear indication that a person in one drastic act can forever change the course of their life. It just happens to be in the negative direction. What I would ask you to do, starting today, is get excited about committing an act. An act that's positive, an act that's constructive, to make the changes in your life that you want made and to go the direction that you want to go. So that's number four, get excited. Get excited about your potential. Human capacity is usually never the problem. 
Little children can learn several languages. We can learn to do the most incredible things. All we need to do is take the time to do it. So it's not a matter of capacity. It's a matter of judgment. It's a matter of excitement. It's a matter of will. And it's a matter of wanting too bad enough. So it's pretty exciting to know that any day you wish, you can change your life. Any day you pick out, you can make major changes. It doesn't ever have to be the same again. And that's exciting. Knowing that intellectually and personally, you can actually do the things that will make major changes in your life. That's number four. Here's number five. Number five is get away. I have found, especially in the last 15, 20 years, that there's an important thing called life balance. You've got to learn to get away. You must learn to get away and be alone. Learn to get away and reflect. Learn to get away and learn how to live as well as how to earn. How sad it would be to learn how to earn well, but not learn how to live well. You must balance your life. We teach something, especially in my staff, I teach a some, something called lifestyle. Lifestyle is how you learn to live your life. Some people have money, but they don't even know how to spend it. They have time, but they don't know how to spend it. Some people are successful, but they don't know how to spend their success. They don't know what to do with it. They don't get joy from it. Rather, they get animosity. A father takes five dollars, crushes it, and throws it at his son and says, if you need it that bad, take it. Now, it's the same five dollars, but instead of dispensing it with joy, he dispenses it with animosity. That's the difference in not knowing how to live. It's called lifestyle. Then you've got to take time to cultivate good friends. You've got to take time to be with your family. You've got to take time to be with the people who are important to you, designing your life in those respects. Get away. Take the time. Reflect on your life. Recharge your batteries. Do some growing away from your enterprise. Then when you come back to your enterprise, after you have taken this time to balance your life, you will find that on the job, working on your enterprise, things will really go much better. So those are the five simple steps to go from average to fortune. Get serious. Get smart. Get going. Get excited. And get away. I hope those points will be valuable for you as you consider them. And I want to thank you for giving me a few minutes of your time to spend just a little time with you. I would invite you to come and attend my seminar if I get a chance to see you there, I'll be happy to meet you. Uh, we usually have several hundred to a thousand people attending the seminar, and I'd love to have you. I think I have some interesting things to share about life and about economics and how to do better. I've learned a lot these last uh, 15, 20 years, and I've capsulized it in one evening. It's from 7 to 11. It's four hours of some very interesting material, and I think you'd find it exciting. I've got some ideas to share. I don't claim they're right. I just claim they're my ideas. But if you'll take the time, if you'll spend an evening with me, I think you'll find it rewarding. And I want to thank you for giving me this uh, few minutes of your time. And for you giving me some of your time, I would just like to sincerely share this with you. Do not walk in front of me. I may not follow. Do not walk behind me. I may not lead but walk beside me and be my friend. Thank you for listening.